Today we are talking about bilirubin metabolism. But before we get into that, I want to break down a couple of key words. The first one is bilirubin. What exactly is this? Bilirubin is a yellow bile pigment produced through the breakdown of red blood cells. As the accumulation of bilirubin builds up in the bloodstream, it can lead to a condition called jaundice. Jaundice is the yellow-orange discolorization we see in our skin, eyes, and tissues. Here's a diagram. On the one side, you can see the normal skinned individual. On the right side, we see the jaundice individual. Just make sure you don't confuse this with a nice tan. You also will be looking at the symptoms. One of the key symptoms or the, one of the worst symptoms is neurotoxicity especially to the nerves of the brain. In the early stages, jaundice can be seen in the eyes, specifically the sclera. You can see the white sclera versus the jaundice sclera. And here's a diagram of the normal hand and a jaundiced hand. Now let's get into the metabolism of bilirubin. RBCs have a lifespan of 120 days, approximately three months. As it gets closer to the maturation of this date, it is taken up by particular endothelial cells to the liver and spleen. These cells are called macrophages. The hemoglobin is extracted out of the RBCs and split into two molecules, the heme group and the globin group. Globin molecule is further broken down into amino acids that are used by the body. The heme group is split into an iron molecule, which is recycled in the body, and a biliverdin molecule. This is done by the enzyme heme oxygenase. Biliverdin is that green pigment that we typically see when you get a bruise. And typically when you get a bruise, you, your skin undergoes a couple of changes in color. One is that it experiences a green color, and that's the biliverdin. And as it ages, you also will start seeing yellow, and that yellow is the bilirubin. Now, biliverdin is further broken down into bilirubin, but this is in the unconjugated form. This is done by the enzyme bilirubin reductase. Now the unconjugated form means that this bilirubin molecule is insoluble in water, meaning it is hard to excrete from the body and it's gonna have a hard time moving throughout the body. So what it needs to do is bind to something in order to move around the body. And that is gonna be done by the molecule albumin. As albumin binds to this unconjugated bilirubin, it is now able to be transported to the liver where it binds to another molecule called glucuronic acid. This is done by the enzyme glucuronyl transferase. The addition of this molecule allows the bilirubin to become conjugated. Now this molecule is water soluble and can easily move around the body. And excreted from the body. Now this bilirubin molecule is in, the, is in the liver and conjugated and it can easily move down the hepatic ducts into the biliary duct system into the small intestine, the duodenum. As it makes its way down the duodenum, it's going to enter into the ascending, transverse, and descending colon. In the colon, we have normal bacteria that exist. This conjugated bilirubin is going to be metabolized further by the normal microorganisms that live in the colon into urobilinogen and stercobilinogen. These organisms break these down further into another molecule called stercobilin. Stercobilin is now excreted in the, in the feces, and this is what gives the feces its yellow-brown color. Now, not all of the Bilirubin is excreted in the colon into the feces. About 10 to 15% is reabsorbed into the bloodstream. Now, some of this is reabsorbed into the liver where it enters the enterohepatic circulation and the body recycles and uses it there. The other half enters the kidney and is eliminated via the urine as urobilin. Now let's talk about a few causes of jaundice. These are classified into prehepatic causes, which are before the liver, hepatic causes, which are intrinsic to the liver, and post-hepatic causes, which are after the liver. 
Now, the prehepatic systemic causes would be hemolytic anemias. Some of these are genetic and consist of thalassemia and sickle cell. Now, with these genetic thalassemia and sickle cell diseases, when you have a crisis, this, pre this speeds up the breakdown of the RBCs. So now their RBCs are not waiting for that 120-day life cycle. This can happen at any time when you have a crisis because the RBCs are very fragile. And as they break down, the accumulation of bilirubin is sped up and jaundice accumulates. A few tropical disorders that cause jaundice are malaria and yellow fever. Now let's jump into the hepatic causes. Viral hepatitis is a big one. Any of the viral hepatitis, hepatitis A, B, C, D, E, can cause some level of jaundice, some more than others. Hepatic toxic drugs, paracetamol overdose, and alcohol abuse are two. Liver cancer. Now let's talk about post-hepatic causes. Gallstone issues cause blockages. Biliary duct atresia and stenosis as well as cancers of the biliary duct system can cause severe forms of jaundice and the last one in this list is pancreatic tumors 